affecting connection. Um, I want to try to do something. One of my students brought me a thing from the Washington Post. He thinks it's the 28th mother of us all. Beta back claimed that first human arose in Africa. Washington Post, you know that conservative racist newspaper? Is, is this anti-Semitic for them to say that? Yeah. Mom, do I have permission to speak? This is my grandmother. So, uh, for people who just think I'm not trying to be black, this is the Choctaw. <laughs> You know, it's amazing, you know, it's amazing, you know, if you say, you, they look at me, they see this nose, they see this braid, married woman with braid, they see all that, and then they'll say, are you part Indian? And you say, oh, you're just trying not to be black. I mean, you know, it's this great confusion that we have in this society, it's a, a confused latecomer who, if you take this truth, of 200,000 years, it's really 250,000 years that they know in a little 25,000 years of them, who's the mathematician? What does that come to? One what does that come to? One ten? Huh? What fraction does that come to? One one hundredth, right? So when you find somebody 10 times younger than you, 10 times younger than you, and you let them lead you somewhere. 10 times younger than you, that's what we're doing. We're the oldest people in the world, and we're letting this infant in the dawn of humanity, destroyer of civilization, try to lead us somewhere. You know, it, 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 it's, it's annoying. It, it's uh, retarding. You ever, have you ever been in a group where you met and everybody has the assignment and the meeting is really moving along and then somebody comes in the group and pulls the whole meeting all the way back to scratch? That's what the European has done to humanity. They have come into the meeting late. They don't know what the deal is. They're not sure who they are. They want to name what everything else is. They're afraid of everything in the world, totally afraid of everything in the world. They define everything by their limited mentality. And all this wouldn't make any difference at all except that we go along with it. See, that's what makes the difference. What makes the difference isn't the lie that they tell, it's the belief that we give to the lie that they tell. See, and that's, that's, that's a major problem. It's a, it's a major problem. I'm not sure that we know the truth, but one thing we do know is that they are lying. We know they are lying. You know, the Easter Bunny does not lay eggs. You can't get a rabbit to lay eggs. You know, it's a fundamental uh, misconception that they have about nature. Miss America may be whoever she is, but this is Miss First World. This is what Miss First World looks like. This is what humanity 200,000 years ago looked like. Big butt. <laughs> this is what the mother of all of us looks like. Now, it's very important for you to understand what your mother looks like, so then you might be prouder when you look like her, you know? You know, if, if, if you think your mother looks like Madonna, you might get confused. <laughs> okay? That's why I like to keep the picture of my grandmother. Because when people tell me I have a big nose, I say, well, it depends upon whose nose you're evaluating it by. Because compared to my Nana's nose, mine are just like so. <laughs> and she's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life, next to my mommy, of course. Okay? It's very difficult. It's very difficult when we're in 1992, 500 years after this fool got lost, 
and decided to rename the world. Now, I, I, I'm going to try to do a couple of things tonight. I want to talk a little bit about Columbus because I don't think we should be at this weekend and not talk about Columbus. I also want to, uh, I think, isn't Dr. J where I can't, is Dr. J having a teacher on Monday? He thinks he owns our lives. You notice he doesn't let us eat. He doesn't let us go to the bathroom. He calls up in the morning and says, Shashi, you can't come to Chicago because you've got to take the lecture tonight. I mean, you know, my husband's going away to Bolivia at 5.30 in the morning. He says, yo, babe, where are you going? I said, I got to go down to City College, you know. That's why I've been married so long, because he hasn't seen me in so long. He can't <laughs> 40. You know, it, it, and, it, and, it, and it's very real. It's very real, and I talk about it all the time. It's very real because this whole thing with Clarence Thomas, and I'm not going to get into debate about that, but I am going to say what I feel because I think that we really make, need to take this thing into context. I don't care if somebody says something in my ears that I don't like. I learned to do this. Yeah, I mean, it seems to me I learned to do this. If I don't like what you say, I just say, check this out. <laughs> I learned that when I was about three years old. <laughs> right? And if I had 13 in my family, I probably would have learned it at two, right? I don't think we can win in this, in this discussion. Clarence is going to get destroyed. And if he doesn't, and if he does, that young lady has destroyed her life. And white women are using her. They are using her. And I'll tell you, it's very deep, because those babes didn't jump out there for Tawana Brawley. They did not break out there for the Jamaican sister who we know was sexually assaulted, not harassed. But when you can take this woman who represents all of what white America wants us to represent and see she is an honorary white woman. You know, that's what she is. I am too. If they would like, they would like me to be, I just refuse to be. But once you get a PhD and stuff and they stop prancing all your little, so you know, Oh, this is, she's credible because she has a law degree, but she's not credible to me because she has a law degree. She's incredible to me. She's incredible to me. She really is. She went, she went out with him. She used his, his, uh, his recommendation to get in law school. She's called him regularly. How can she be a credible character? But check this out, and we need to understand this very deeply. We need to understand this very deeply. For the last month or so, they have, they have bombarded us with Clarence Thomas. They have said they don't like him, they've said he's a conservative, but they have brought him forward as a most moral man, a most moral man. And we know he must be pretty damn moral, despite the fact he has a white wife. If, if these are the kind of babes he was meeting, now we understand why he married a white woman. But we won't discuss that. Um, this is deep. This is deep. This is very deep. This is very deep. Let me, let me assure you, Emmett Till got killed because he looked at a white woman, and now they're killing off our black men just because they talk to us. Now, now this is deep. This is very deep. Don't be abused by the idea that this is about Clarence Thomas and Anita Hill. It is not about Clarence Thomas and Anita Hill. It is about their dividing and conquering us. They are dividing and conquering us. And these poor little sisters that think they're feminists because they don't know they're the mothers of all humanity and they're around here following some infant woman who thinks she ought to I was on a panel with one woman who said, we ought to abolish pregnancy. I said, too bad your mama didn't think of that. You know, I wouldn't have to spend my time doing it. When you learn to hate your role that the most high 
the creator who was never created, has given you this most sacred trust your own ability to bring humanity into the world. When you are taught to see that as something negative, as something burdensome, when you want to become a man, you are confused. You are confused. The Creator gave you the sacred trust. So this is very deep. They are dividing us. But it is more than anything else. I'm not going to say in this one place, sweetheart. They are, um, you know, they, you know, this technology. You know, I'm an African person. Ain't no way I can stand in one spot. <laughs> Yes, my son will follow me, won't you? I thought about it. I thought about it deep. I thought about this thing deeply. And you, you really got to understand that Democrats don't have anything on the horizon like a leader. The closest thing they got is Doug Wilder, who has balanced his budget in Virginia, and perennial JJ. Okay. Now that's the best they got. Did you see them 10 little, I never even heard of these people that jumped out there. <laughs> they don't have oratorical skills. They don't have anything. And so what they have done, mind you, they destroyed Gary Hart with that little play he had Mind you, they destroyed Marion Berry, Adam Clayton Powell, Mike Tyson, Sister Sue for a hundred million dollars. I want to know if that she sued a little boy around the corner who pinched her. Yeah. No, we as black people need to establish. Need I'm gonna talk about this tonight. We need to establish a council of elders that sets up what our African values are. And when these kinds of things come up on the table, we need to deal with them in the African community. And we need to demand that the brothers are respectful in an African way. And we need to demand that the sisters demand respect. Because you can't sexually harass me. Not with your mouth. And if you try it with your hand, you're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> you know, I can be hurt, but I will respond. I'm having a lot of problems with middle-class professional sisters. The sister on WLIV the other day was so strident. Did you hear her the day before yesterday? She was so strident, and she said she was going to marry a brother. Did you hear her? And that sister's anger, I never heard such anger. I felt sorry for the brother already. And she says, I'm harassed every morning I step out of the door. And, and that comes from a very deep problem that I talked about on WLIB on Tuesday. And the, before the 50s and 60s, young women were socialized by us old babies. And so if a man said something to you you didn't like, we would tell him, we would tell you little things. My mother would tell you little things to make him never make that mistake again. Now, like if a brother said, I sure would like to spend some time with you tonight, and blah, 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 blah. And I say, well, then what would we do after that 30 seconds? You know? <laughs> right? We were taught how to put these people in their place like that, you know? You know, right? You know, sister, you know, I mean, see, you demand respect. You get, you demand respect. I demand respect. And when a man grabbed me at age, just say a couple of years ago in Philadelphia, he grabbed me, I said, take your hands off of me. And he said, well, you look like you're important. I said, all the more reason for you to take your hands off of me. They were just trying to hold me to taste. So when I want to talk with you, I said, Right? Right? That'll do it, won't it? That'll do it. 
And when we used to be, when we used to think our mothers were hip, and we used to think our grandmothers were the repository of wisdom, and we used to sit around the Thanksgiving or the Holocaust table, I guess we should call it now, well, we used to sit around the table at Easter and Christmas and stuff and listen to them. Oh, that old guy, he used to do this, and I just said that, and we would take that, put it in our computer, and when the guy came to us, we knew exactly how to put him in his place. And we didn't have to get up on national television, and I'm trying to tell you how deep it is because when they put a black man and a black woman on the front page of the newspaper when every single columnist has it on the front newspaper, it is their agenda, not ours. It is their agenda. You have to say, and Mark Riley's bothering me because I love this brother, but he's off the mark. He thinks this is an incident. This is not an incident. If it were an incident, then they would have come out for the sister at St. John. Where were they if it were an incident? They would have come out when they murdered their sister the other night. You know, it isn't. This is the way you read uh, Florent Henry's uh, Black Migration. You read even Gerda Learn is a white woman, but she has all this wonderful data in black women in white America. They have always used black women they're using us to carry their babies. They're putting their babies in our womb. They used to just have us suckle them. Now they're putting their babies in our womb. And they're using her. Do you see these feminists on TV? They don't have one black woman out there. Screaming and hollering. Don't nobody want them ugly women. No way. <laughs> Not the ones I've seen on TV. They don't even have a man to get mad at because he ain't even talking to them less harassing. That's all in their mind. It's all in their mind. Did you notice that these strident feminists are women that a brother or no other man is even looking at and they're screaming, oh, these men, listen, I'm saying to the TV because I talk to things like this. Now, who is hit on you, ladies? I mean, this is all in your mind. You are mad, you are ugly, not just physically ugly, just an ugly persona because it's not what you look like, it's the beauty within that never surfaces to come out and grab somebody, you see? And they're making our beautiful young women ugly. They are, because we don't know who we are. We don't know who we are. So tonight, I want to try to talk about, they are going to try to destroy Doug Wilder and Jesse Jackson. They're going, they have set up a paradigm this week that the best black man is probably a sex offender. That's what they've done. That's what they've done. Every black man is a rapist, and he is one. He didn't get to it, but he was on his way. That's what they've done. And we in the black community are so ready to think our black brothers and most of our black sisters will commit a crime that we say, well, did he do it? And I keep saying, did he do what? What is the it that you all keep talking about? She said he asked her for a date and told her about some dirty movie he was going to see. Yeah. Oh, it's an unpleasant conversation at best. Now, how many sisters in here talk to brothers a lot? Okay. How many brothers that have you have worked with have come up and discussed pornographical, pornographical things without you developing some kind of relationship with them? Okay, you, you have. Okay, you have. We're all kind of young, okay? Then what we need to do is find some way that you can immediately deal with those. But it's true. On the college campus now, I mean, I, I recognize that this is a major problem as young girls really get in trouble. And that, I say, comes from the 60s where the young sisters began to get socialized by the white colleges that we send our children to. Send our children off to Smith, Colgate, etc., 
instead of to Hampton or, or Fisk or Clark Atlanta. I sent my kids to FAMU so I can say that they didn't do too much good, but they tried. We need to look at it. That's all I'm talking about. We need to look at it. We need to go back to our African roots. So I'm going to start tonight's lecture on our African roots. Okay. They say Columbus discovered America. They say Columbus discovered America. Then other people, even Ivan Van Sertima, said no, the Africans discovered America. Well, I would like to argue that the first original Americans discovered America. I mean, I just think that that makes sense. My people think they discovered America. I have uh, this thing from Barry Felder. My people are the Micmac, and they had, see that? And they had hieroglyphic writing. And they actually have a, a whole thing in here that shows and compares my ancestors, not this one, not the one I showed you, my grandmother's Chocolate Cherokee, but this is from the Nova Scotian side. And they had the actual hieroglyphic writing. So all you pretenders to be African, I can document mine. That really kicks their butt. You know, that just <laughs> kicks their butt. It just kicks their butt. They've been trying to get me to not talk about the African Native American uh, connection, but now it has finally come to 1492. Check this out. The world starts here for humans. This is called the interlocustrine region or where all the lakes meet. Humanity developed hypothetically 250,000 years ago. Now there are other kinds of hominids that are walking around, but they claim that humanity in our form, Homo sapiens sapiens, starts here. And look like the sister here. Now I keep doing this because I want you to plant this in your brain, you see. The brothers also. Strong, big butt, dark brown, curly head, long arms, big feet. First people in the world. That's the prototype of humanity. That's the prototype of humanity. That is the model of humanity. Short little people that we call pygmies were the original, or uh, we call Khoisan, you know, the, the Bushmen. Short little strong people. The people who built the pyramids were short little people, strong people, you know. You understand? Muscle, all muscle. And they, and they left here, they say, and they, and they also have some fossil here in Ethiopia. And they came and they distributed themselves all over the motherland. And then Europeans like to reduce every interpretation to one. You know, like there's one God instead of many manifestations of the divine spirit. There's just one, this little white man with the beard and the book that says, you did the wrong thing today, right? Okay, so they have one hypothesis, they have one story for the peopling of this continent, and that's what I'm going to try to show you. They say humanity started here. This is the equator, the equatorial belt, and they say spread out here, spread out here, and down here, and then they went up here, and they're dark people, and they get caught in 100,000 years of the ice. And that's how they lost their behinds, because you stood in the ice for 100,000 years, and you squinch up and you show up. <laughs> Is this documented? You know they walk around like this? I don't know what your problem is. I see it. I am talking about empirical evidence. Empirical means you can see it. You're laughing because you know it's true. They lost their brown eyes. They lost their color. And the op calls them leucoderm, which means their skin is white. Okay? That's what it is. In civilization and barbarism. The skin is white. Look at them. You know, like when you have leukocytes, 
The white cell, white cells are going crazy, right? Look at them. Okay? Now, these people turn very white, and then they come back after the 100,000 years and begin to warm, begin to warm up. The 100,000 years are called the worm. Okay? And then they say that these original black people and these leucoderms intermixed, and they have some documentation here. So I'm not going to go into the Neanderthals tonight. They have some documentation that they intermixed, and then you get two intermixtures. With the massive African, you get the dark, long straight hair, because the hair lost the curl, long straight hair down here, and up here, you get the light straight hair, right? These people didn't lose their butt. These people did. And I've also been looking at a lot of other mixed people. You notice, if you look at a lot of Hispanic people, Latins, Latinos, that they have very Asian-looking features. I used to think they were all Chinese or mixed. But now I've begun to look, even in my own family. You look at your own family, because all you black people got all these mixed-up families, just like I do. Don't say you don't. I know you do. <laughs> if you look at the ones that are all mixed up, and you begin to notice these kind of Asian looks, because the mixture begins to orientalize your features. Okay? And the op says it, so you end up with these two kinds of things. Okay? Then they say that these people went all the way through here, through the ice, these tropical people, through the ice, and came into this hemisphere up here. Isn't that what you've been taught? Right? In waves of 20 or 30 people. Now, this is what they tell you, right? And so, now, they started here short, black, and strong, and came up here and got tall and brown, then white, then yellow, and then brown, right? And then they come over here, and they come in here, they're little short, fat, extra-layered, planty-eyed Inuits, what you all call Eskimos, right? That's what they are, right? Then, they, then we're supposed to believe because Columbus discovered America now, right? Columbus discovered America now, so all the people over here came this way. <laughs> and they come down here, waves the band, and, you know, and there's no archaeological evidence more than 12 or 13,000 years here, but the archaeological evidence is down here is 40 and 50,000 years, 40 and 50,000 years old. They came down here, ate their bones, the, or disintegrated their bones along the way in the ice, in the cold, and came down here and heavily populated this area by 1492 so that when Columbus arrived, there were 210 million people here. Anywhere between 50 million and 210 million. Now you can there were at least 11 million in Central America. At least. There were 12 and a half million above the Rio Grande to what we now call Canada. Okay? Now, uh, okay, so say I, say I believe that. And so I'm supposed to believe that these Eskimos and even my ancestors, the Micmacs, came down here, then turned brown? Well, they had to turn brown because you know that everybody along the equatorial belt is black, short, big butt, flat nose, and stuff. So what are we supposed to believe? That they came here, got white, then got yellow, some got brown, then came over here, white, and came down here and turned brown again. And then, then they got brown around here. By the time they got back down to the equator, they turned into black people. And now when they taught you, why are you laughing? Because you know that's what you teach you. I can give you Peoples of Africa, an encyclopedia just came out, and they say that is the diffused, that is the peopling of the Americas. They all came from one place. They all came across the Barren Strait. Now, when we leave here tonight, we're not all going to do that. We're, all, we're not even all going to go out this one door. Some of us will go out that door. And some of us will go out this door, and some of us are going to go out that door, and some of us are going to go this way, and some of us are going to go that way, right? Suppose I suggest to you that your ancient ancestors not only did this, but they went this away and this away. Now, wouldn't that make sense? Since they all look alike, and when you get down here, you have people that are identical to him, so somebody figured that out. So that's the second 
theory they give you is, well, of course, they didn't go this way. None of them went this way. Now, white folks, they don't believe anybody crossed the Atlantic until Columbus crossed the Atlantic, because Columbus discovered America. Now, and Columbus discovered America, and don't you forget it. So, so then they say, well, maybe they went this way. Now, check this out. You see how big the Indian Ocean is? And you see here, here. Now, they're going to tell you that your ancestors could go here, and then, and then, check this out, continue along on all these little islands, Pacific, and hit the highest mountain range in the world, climb up over the mountains and come back down and populate Brazil. But they didn't come across the Atlantic Ocean, because Columbus discovered America. Now, we're all intelligent people. We're educated by the West of man. We know how to deal with Aristotelian logic. So Dr. McIntyre, could you come across the Atlantic Ocean with just, you know, primitive boat? How difficult is it to come across the Atlantic Ocean? Well, Cabral, in 1500, was trying to come up down here, because the Europeans Never. <laughs> the European, I want you to notice that the sons of Africa take care of you. You never have to ask them one thing. They're always on. They walk into my car, they do anything. I never have to ask them, and I'll do anything for them. Now, so. Here, Cabral is coming down here because they always sail. This was their problem. This was the great thing Columbus did. He sailed away from the land. Everybody else tried. They all sailed so they could keep the land in sight. Columbus ventured out. And see, for Europeans, this is terrible because, you know, there are dragons and there's Loch Lomond and all kinds of strange things in the water because they never went in the water. You know, it was against the, against the law for them to bathe. They never went in the water. You know, the Queen Victoria used to bathe once a month whether she needed it or not. And, in, and, and the pilgrims in Plymouth Rocket was against the law to bathe. And, and Barbara, Barbara Justice has this book, The Atrocities of, uh, of, uh, of the Moors and stuff, and said that when they killed some of those, uh, you know, great crusaders and they started peeling off all that mail and stuff and they got down their skin, it was just a sheet of lice. There's a book called Dirt. It's a trip in a half. You know why they always walked around there with those little, it's a trip in a half. You know how they would walk around there like? Because the smell. <laughs> and those great big wigs had wires in them. You know those wigs where the women wore? They never washed. Just imagine a woman who never washes, never washes. Just imagine that. That's gross. It's hard to imagine. It. Oh God, it's sick. <laughs> <laughs> they described Native Americans as frothing at the head with soap. <laughs> if you read the history of the West Indies, and they describe. After they do the medicine, they describe strange medical practices in the history of the West Indies as the strange medical practices of the Africans. And just before they give birth, they go and dip themselves in the water, you know, to purify yourself before you bring life. And then you dig the hole, and then you spot so that the baby would be born right into Mother Earth. You know, I mean, but that's the way Africans and Native American women did it. You know, I don't know how European women did it. I mean, it was a mad, no wonder they had such birth uh, uh, mortality. I mean, you know, the kids was going through the, you know what, to get here, man. The poor little new kid was just running through germs to get into the world. No wonder they had such a high death rate. Anyway, Cabral was coming along here. He hit the Congo, the Gulf here, in a turbulent storm and gets blown <laughs> across the Atlantic. That's how hard it is to get across the Atlantic. He gets blown across the Atlantic, just 
Shoop, of course, it's just a very short time. And he says it's a couple of weeks in Brazil, marveling, marveling at the beautiful women because the women were bathed and they didn't wear any clothes and their breasts didn't sag after they had babies. They wrote all that. You should see what they wrote. You know, they, they said our women were just shut at the beauty of these women. They, they named all their privy parts and decided how beautiful their aprons were. They did the same thing when they saw African women. They just went berserk. They just went berserk. You need to understand that. You need to understand that African warriors and Native American warriors always carried their women with them. Europeans never brought their women with them. Never. They said, lock them up, put a little chastity belt on it, turn the key in the rust. <laughs> Check that out. It was before Krylon and stuff. <laughs> Rustoleum. I see. See, we, we never, we, I'm sorry, you know, I have these degrees in history. I'm sorry, I've studied these people, I'm sorry. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, what can I tell you? And you sit there and read this stuff and you go, ah! <laughs> it's, just, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just, you know, if you come out of our culture and you're reading it, it's just constantly, you know, I mean, you're reading the book and you, you want to put it down, but you want to read it. It's just, it's unbelievable. And, and one thing I've come out with a theory is everything they accuse us of is something that they have done because it's in their collective memory. So when they accuse us of ca cannibalism and you find their fossils, we find teeth marks all over the bones. You know, I mean, like everything they have accused us of in this book that Barbara Justice had, I think it's the atrocities, something uh, uh, during the Crusades or something like that. She said they had a whole village where they put all the people on, on pits and barbecued them. You know, and this was during the Crusade. And you know, they accused us of being cannibals. What it is is that in some Native American groups, uh, when they would kill the warrior, sometimes they would take the head chief and take his brain and maybe, you know, like do some ceremonial thing and maybe eat part of the brain. But we eat brains all the time. It's not doing us any good, but we keep eating. <laughs> so Cabral gets, gets shot over here. Now, this monoculture thesis continues. And I'm saying that African came right across. I'm arguing that. And I'm arguing if you look at the people around the equatorial belt, you will see that. And I'm arguing.